Okay, so we're now recording and we're now live and we're now seeing some people join us. So welcome Chris and George and Helen, and Laurie, uh, Richard uh, and Russell. Um, lovely to see you all coming. We'll start at 11 o'clock. Walter's revving his engine up as we speak, as you can see in the background there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yeah. <laughs> Frederick uh, and Carol, Caleb, nice to see you. Well, I can't see you, but it's nice to ha have you join the session. Josh, <clears throat> uh, Michael, um, Vince, lovely to see so many names joining us. We've got a couple of minutes before we start at 11 o'clock. Uh, well, hopefully it's, um, you've got some shade to sit under for the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, hopefully we will um, give you something to think about and get you, get you to participate, but uh, hopefully not, uh, you'll not be too hot and sticky uh, in this wonderful spring slash summer weather we're having. Of course, I'm British. You're, so not, have... you're not complaining about the weather, are you, Bob? I am not. I'm British. I'm celebrating the weather. I never, <laughs> never complain about it. Well, I, can, I complain about the cold and the, the wind here. We're, we're 19 metres up in Derby and uh, the wind just whips through this estate on, uh, on the, in the wind. Not, not now, but uh, often. I've, I've learned to wear a scarf whatever the time of year. <laughs> and uh, in the last three days, I haven't worn my scarf, but otherwise I, oh, tend, to wear a, uh, I tend to wear a scarf. Morning, Josh. Morning, Kerry. Uh, good morning, Paul. Oh, there's more than one Paul on the call, so that's going to be confusing. Uh, Anna Vera and Steve. Hello, Steve. Nice to uh, see your name there, Scott. Uh, also, Joanne, welcome. Uh, Adrian, Alex. Very good. Just on our countdown to get started now. We'll start at 11 o'clock on time. Beverly. Ah, nice to see you, Beverly. Hello, uh, Bev. <clears throat> uh, some people we know from many years ago. Okay, we are at 11 o'clock, Walter. So over to you. I am going to turn my video off. So um, it's all yours. Thanks, Bob. Well, welcome to our Empathy Styles workshop webinar. Um, you know who I am. And I'm delighted, really delighted to be back here again to talk about this very important topic, empathy styles, which I sort of ran out of time for on the last occasion. So we're going to give the whole of the 45 minutes to this topic, a really important topic. And here we've put a, um, a subheading of creating outstanding business relationships. Now that sounds really grand, doesn't it? It's really important though, but there's a problem. Uh, if I, my machine would work. <laughs> Ah, so get my, oh, there we go. The problem, problem, have you ever been sold to or managed by somebody who didn't listen to you? They pretend to listen or they actually listen. They pretend to listen and, and uh, they, they don't get it. They don't hear what you're saying or they don't actually listen and they just wait for you to stop speaking before they get into what they want to say. I'm sure we've all been there. I think I've been there on both sides of the table, uh, both selling and managing probably. Um, and it's frustrating, isn't it? It's, it's really frustrating. Now, one of the things that we can do is that um, I'd identified the biggest objection in sales is I don't like you or I don't trust you. And when you look at that situation where somebody's not listening to us, <clears throat> you realize, well, wh why would you? Why would I like you? Why would I trust you if you won't listen to me? Of course, it's unspoken. Probably nobody on the call, uh, on, on, if you're in sales, has ever been actually said that. <laughs> Somebody said that to you, I don't like you, I don't trust you. Um, but it's, it's there. We know it's, a, it's an important one. And recruitment agencies will tell us that one of the most important um, the biggest reason people leave their jobs is the manager because they're not good enough. That's the top reason. One of the mistakes we make is that we think everyone is like us. Or if they're not like us, we think they ought to be. They should be. So we either try to change them or we complain about them. And it's a very easy mindset to get into. 
but it's wrong and it doesn't work. Now, this may not be you. You may be a really, and we know a few other people on the call today, and we know they're really experienced both as managers and salespeople. We know you're really experienced as a salesperson, as a manager. You may be experienced and skillful. But one of the benefits and the values of what we're going to do today may be to help your younger colleagues to understand a bit more about how, how people work. Because it may, I think I was in my 40s before I started to really realize why and how people were different. And it sounds ridiculous. Of course, we know people are different. But how does that actually work? Because when I started to learn to sell, I was given a, a, a presentation. So everybody got the same presentation. Now, I know today that just wouldn't work. So today, we're going to bring you a possible answer uh, of, of the... Uh, it's called Empathy Styles. Some of you know it already. Some of you are using it uh, as a technique, as a tool. We're going to show you what and how, what, what is it, how it works. Talk about selling to and managing different people. Because I'm going to ask you to think about someone in your life, in your work maybe, one of your clients or prospects, who's different from you. And we're going to ask you to think about that and why is that the case. But more than that, what can you do about that? If you want to do something, what can you do? It will be an insight for your younger colleagues, if they're on the call today, to why people are different and how they're different, how we see that and what we can do about it. Because there's no point in just understanding they're different, but you need to do something with it as well. Toward the end, there'll be an opportunity for training, learning. There will be quite a lot of learning going on today, I think, anyway. But there'll be an opportunity for training. And there'll be some free stuff for those of you who stay with us to the end. So that's where, we, where we're going today. This model, this empathy styles model, some of you know it already. <clears throat> it's extremely practical. It's extremely helpful. In my 40 years, that's four zero years of training in business. It's probably one of the most helpful and practical models about people that I've ever come across. In fact, just understanding myself, understanding other people I work around, people I've recruited or people I've fired, people I've, I've joined up with and what's happening there and how to deal with people differently. It's won literally millions of pounds for people who've used it. We've helped many companies achieve that goal, multi-million pound deals through using part of the process is using the empathy styles, understanding people in a different way. It's really quick and easy to learn. You'll get a lot from this in the first 20, 25 minutes. So you'll, get, you'll understand the model, you'll see it. Um, you won't get a, we won't get a deep dive today, we haven't got time. You need no specialist psychometric knowledge. You don't have to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist. We are none of those things. We're just salespeople and business people. All you need to do is to be able to learn, um, observe, think, and then act. That's all we're asking you to do. So, um, Get me technology here. So how, I'm sure you want a notepad ready if you haven't already got that and, pay, and pen and paper. Um, and we're going to ask you to pop the um, um, comments or any questions you've got in the chat box. And by the way, please, can you convert your chat so that you're chatting to everyone, not just the panelists? So please do that now. Please, please go to your chat and just change the setting to chat to everyone, not just panelists. Bob Hayward is on the chat box. Uncle Bob, he's on the chat today. And so he will deal with your chats if he can. He is also an expert in empathy styles. So he, I'm sure he'll be able to answer many questions if you've got them on the way through. If not, we'll wait for the Q&A or he'll, he'll interrupt me at some point and say, hey, Walt, uh, hang on a minute. So here's an idea, which is pretty obvious. People are different. Now, I know you know that. We all know that. People that are different in age, in height, in weight, in experience, in gender, in background, education, in many, many, many other ways. And there's one big way in which they're different, and it's called their temperament. It's how they are, how they show up in the world. And the temperament, psychologists will tell us, it's the way we are. The way we describe people. So if we're looking at this group here, left to right, top to bottom, um, 
top left, isn't she so chatty? She's always on the phone. <clears throat> Middle, isn't he worried? He's always worried. She's so strong and powerful. He's after money. That's all he thinks about. She's always finishing a project and he's so creative. <clears throat> it's the way we describe people. It's our family members. It's our clients. It's our prospects. It's our team members, maybe even yourself. So if somebody says, well, who are you? Who are you? Saying, well, I'm really, or, I'm really chatty or I'm really focused or, or I'm really business minded or whatever it might be. Now, that's important for two reasons. The first is <clears throat> that 90%, about 90% of our non-rational behavior is driven by our temperament. Now you might say, well, okay, yeah, but that's not much, is it? That's a huge amount actually, because we are not rational beings. If you've had any experience in life, you know you're not rational. So here we go, the cream cake or the chocolate cake here in front of us. So you're losing weight, you look, you're watching your diet, someone offers you some chocolate cake, I'd like to have cream with mine or ice cream, and then suddenly we find we're eating that. It's not a rational thing to do. It's because we want to, because we like it, because it looks good, it tastes so nice. It's not rational, it's emotional. And that's what drives us. We are driven by our emotions in that regard. Business as well. And those of you who sat at board meetings, have sold to companies, have sold to people, you know decisions are not just made rationally. I wish they were. You know that you've had, sometimes you've had the best deal for a, a, a potential customer, but they haven't seen that. Or they have seen that and they say, actually, we'd rather stay with our present supply. It's the safe thing to do. That's not rational, that's emotional. Um, so that's what we're looking at today. The second reason that it's important is that maybe 40% of the people that you meet today or it, this week will not either like you or understand you. That may not be 40%, it might be a bit less, it might be a bit more. One of my clients once said to me, friend, client he I, I told this to him and he said well he laughed and he said well, i think it's probably more for him it would be more it may well be it may well be true i think he was joking but he may not have been um but the point is not everybody you know likes you or understands you now if you don't believe that think about the way you are with people because it works in reverse as well so there will be a lot of people out there that you know that you don't like. You don't particularly want to have a coffee with them or have lunch with them, or you certainly wouldn't want to go on a holiday with them and you don't want to work with them. Maybe you have to, and we'll come back to that. Because one, the reason that's important, some of them will be clients, some of them will be prospects, they will be team members, they may be family members, uh, they may be just friends who, who, you, who you know. So temperament. This is what we're talking about today. Temperament, it's hugely powerful. Like this river, it's always running. It's like the undercurrent in this river. No matter what's happening above it, the undercurrent is always there. I don't know how last time you stood in a river, <clears throat> long time for me, doesn't have to be very deep for it to be very strong. And suddenly you start to be swept away by it because it's so strong. This is not changing by the way, either quickly or easily. <clears throat> but behavior can change. Our behavior can and does change. And that's what we can tap into. So we're going to start looking at the empathy styles model now. And I want you to start thinking about, I'd like you to start thinking about in order to understand the model a bit better, to have a reference point. So I'm going to ask you to think about somebody who is, who you know well, but you don't get on with. You know well, but you don't get on with. Now, I know you may be lucky that have nobody like that. In, I've, I met somebody the other day who said, I don't know anybody like that. I said, okay, great. I, I wish I had your life. Um, it may be true for you, but it may be that there's just somebody there that you, you're not sure about. There might be somebody that you just can't stand. When their name comes up on your phone <clears throat> or your email, you think, well, what do they want now? Why do I have to talk to them? You certainly want to have a, wouldn't have a coffee with them. So think about that person. Um, write their name down or their initials, or if you're sitting next to them today, maybe their initials backwards or something, some way of identifying them. But also, I'd like you to write down what it is that you don't get on with. What is it about them that you don't get on with? Are they too chatty? They're not chatty enough. They're not friendly. They're too friendly. They don't listen. They listen too much, and they don't tell you what they're saying. They, do want, they tell you what to do. They don't ask questions. Uh, they're, they're, they're boring. They too long-winded, they're never there when you want them. What is it about them that you don't like? And then we'd like you to 
um, oh, so se secondly, I'd like you to, what could you do differently with your person X? And, oh, gonna go back. <laughs> oh, so pop in the chat box, please, if you would. Um, not their name, we don't wanna know that, but we would like to know what is it about them that you don't get on with? What it, just two couple of words, one or two words. Dishonest, <laughs> duplicitous, gosh, arrogant, selfish, uncaring. Looks too much, wow, always right, two-faced, know everything, hidden agendas, manipulative, negative, <clears throat> like different things, doesn't listen. Snobby, hmm. Gossips, too focused on the money. Lies, wow. Okay, introverted, self-centered. Okay, thank you for those. We're gonna hold on to those. We're gonna move on now. Thank you for those. Um, and we're gonna have a look at the next one, which is what, so because the question, the next question then is, so what? So what, um, I don't get on, the real issue is what could I do differently if I care to, what could I do differently with that person X in order to have a better relationship? If they're a prospect, how to sell to them, if they're part of the team, how to manage them better. If they're part of my family, how do I get on with them better? Maybe even in this lockdown situation. So we're going to now move on to the seven styles. The model is in seven styles. Now seven, this is describing seven temperaments essentially. Now seven's a great number because it's the limit of our short-term memory. Um, so you will remember these today. Most of today, you will remember these. You may, and if I would give you 10, 15, 20, you won't remember them, but seven, you've got a chance of remembering them. Three of them are extrovert, um, three of them are introvert. And so let me, get, let me give you the here, are, here are the, here are the seven. I won't read them, you're ca capable of reading as well as I, I am. I'll let you have a look at those for a moment. So I said three of them are extrovert, three are introvert, and one is the controller. And we're all a mix of these. Uh, we've all got all of them in some sort of mix. As adults, we've got somewhere between two and four of these are strong. The others are either average or weak. And we won't necessarily go into the average and the weak today. Today we're looking at the strong, although the average and the weak styles do make a difference. So when somebody's missing something, as we would say, or as I would say, or as they're low in something, it does make a difference in how they behave and how they perform. So that's what um, this is um, quick to understand, by the way. You will get this in 20 minutes, you will get this. A deep dive will take longer. We haven't got time for that today, but you will get it. Um, and this combination, these stars plus your background and experience will give you a large part of the way you are, your personality. So we're now gonna look at the first one. Now each one has a name. This one's called the M or the mover, the high M. And this has a desire to communicate. Well, actually it's about chatting. It's not about, I don't want to communicate with the world. I just want to chat with the world. I'm on text. On, uh, on, on email, or not so much on email, on text, on, on FaceTime, whatever, on the phone. I just want to talk. So this is, a, this, is the, um, this is the friendly dog. So imagine you're coming home from work, um, when we could get out, when you finally get out, you're coming home from work, and your dog or the neighbor's dog, it's a big red setter or something, comes bounding down the street, tongue hanging out, and tail wagging away. This is the friendly dog delighted to see you actually they're delighted to see anybody it doesn't matter who they are all they're looking for is affection they're looking for to be noticed to be stroked to be patted and that's it and if you ignore them they'll go off and find somebody else that's the m positive chatty full of life and energy always want it on the go they want to get on with things big friendly smile but one of the biggest ways you can see people when you meet them is the, the friendly smile we'll see another character later on that smiles it's a different smile it's a charming smile this is a friendly smile hi lovely to see you how are you doing that sort of thing this is uh, informal this is not a formal character at all starts lots in life finishes little so starts lots of things um learning stuff gets bored quickly distracts and off they go. Now, think about your person X, the person you don't get on with. 
is this person high M or not? So have I just put that yes or a no, not in the, anywhere, just put it on your pad, please. Yes or no to high M. Because we'll ask you that question for each one of these. So the next one is the debater. This is the high D, I sometimes known as the double checker. That's a bit pejorative, so we could call it debater now. So this has the desire for security. This is the dolphin. So this is warm and caring, not aggressive, worries about everything, worries about the past, regrets about the past, worries about the, the present, and concerned about the future. How is it going to work? These salt of the earth, um, they look after people, and aren't we just grateful right now that we've got these people in the world, these high Ds who are prepared to look after us, not for money, but because they, they, in fact, they enjoy it and they believe it's their job to do. And they keep everything, by the way. So under the stairs, in the attic, in the garden shed, in the kitchen drawers, everything's kept. Briefcases, everything just in case. You might need it, you never know when you might need it. But the thing about it, it's in no particular order. And we'll meet another character in a minute who keeps, also keeps everything, but it's in order. But the D has a struggle because that kitchen drawer is full of bank statements and bits of string and everything else. Now, uh, and they worry about everything. Um, so think about your person X. Is this person a high D? By the way, the high D won't make a decision. So if you've got somebody that you don't get on with because they won't make decisions, it may well be their high D. So tea or coffee? Oh, I don't know. What are you having? Because the D wants to make the right decision. And what is the right decision? Tea or coffee? Who knows? You might as well. I'm making both. What do you want? Well, I'll still have what you're having. So it's the right decision. So that's the D. So the next one is the hunter, the H. This is charming, quick, astute, like a fox. This is like a fox outside the chicken run, waiting to get in. How do I get into those chicken? So opportunistic, uh, makes things happen though, creates business. They're great in business because they'll make things happen. And WIIFM, this is the biggest question they have for themselves. What's in it for me? So why should they do what you want them to do? And we'll come back to that later. So this is the charmer. This is the, the lovely smile. Uh, these people will be charming, absolutely charming to you because who knows, you may have a value to them uh, later. Who knows? Or maybe now. So think about your person X. Um, and, and one or two people put the... Um, uh, lies and deceitful. This might have an impact on that. And there's another component, there's another style that links with this one, maybe that if this is if that one's low and this one's high, then you need to be probably a little bit cautious. But so is your person X a high H? Just have a think about that and put that um, on your. So the first three we've got, these are three extroverts. So we've got the mover, the M, the debater, the D, the hunter, the H. So these are all extroverts and they take their view of the world from outside of themselves. They, they have to look outside to see. So the mover has a hard job being a mover when he doesn't have anyone to talk to and there's no one to chat to. Same as the debater having to worry about people or the hunter, I've got no one to sell to. Let's look at the next three, the three introverts. The first one's the artist, desire to create the high A. Sensitive, private and shy, lots of ideas, visionary, wants to be different lifestyle, dress, thoughts, car, so the purple driving the purple beetle is going to be a high A. Lots of ideas about everything. If you're not high A, you have no idea what it's like to be high A and have all those ideas. This is the oyster <clears throat> sitting quietly at the bottom of the seabed doing nothing or not actually they're cre creating a beautiful pearl. This is the person in the kitchen at the party, doesn't say much, just standing there talking to people one-to-one -one and watching the rest of the party. They won't look you in the eye. One of the clues to a high A when you meet them is do they look you in the eye? They don't want to put you under pressure so they won't stare at you. That's one of the clues. So is your person X a high A? And they won't tell you what you think they're thinking. So that's the number. Number, <clears throat> number five, the, the politician, the high P, this desire to win. This is a naturally good leader. This is the tiger in the jungle. Don't get in their way. They're not friendly like the M or the H, and they're not money driven like the H. Um, they're, they're, it's, all, it's all about power and status and about being on the rung of the ladder. These people are decisive and strong. I want to lead. And if you're in a team, if you're leading a team, 
and you've got a strong P or a number of strong P's in your team, you'd better be good as a leader because they will want to take over if you're not. We've got a mountain to climb. Let's get on with this. Let's achieve this. That's the P. <clears throat> so is your person X a high P? Just have a think about that and pop a note down about that. Number six then, two to go. Is number six is the engineer, the high E. This is the beaver who'd rather die than not finish the dam. Hardworking, practical, focused, gets things done. Loves a plan, wonders how the rest of us get by without a plan, without lists. Wants lists, lists on the computer, lists on the laptop, lists on the fridge. How do you work? How do you live without a list of things to do? And they can be boring because they'll tell you in detail and at length about their project and the what they've got planned for the future. So you'd better be interested or tell them you haven't got time and move on. So is your person X a high E? So let's have a quick re review then. These are the introverts, the last three, three, the artist, the A, the politician, the engineer. Now what that means is they take their view of the world from within themselves. So the artist, the A, doesn't need anybody else to have ideas and dreams and visions. Same with the P. The P will have their idea about um, how, how to achieve things. Same with the E, they'll have their ideas. And finally, the final one then is the N, the high N, the desire for social approval. This is, this is the controller of the others. The higher this is, the more control the person has and the, the less the excess of the other six. So this is the penguin. So they're dressed in blacks and whites and greys and whatever's appropriate for the party they're in. One of the first questions you ask an N to go to a party, they'll say, what's the dress code? because um, they want to fit in um, and they group together. Your old, head, your old head teacher is almost certainly an N. So if you think about your old head teacher, you're looking at a high N. <clears throat> the N increases as we get older, we get, become more formal, more disciplined, more responsible, more mature and more rigid in some ways. Uh, and then we, we reverse it again as we get even older than that. So is your, heart, is your person X? These are hard people to understand sometimes because all you see is formality. Is your, high per, is your person X a high N? So let's have a look. Back to X then, person we've been talking about, person you don't get on with. So can you see them? Have a think about them. Can you see their strong style in the seven we've done? Maybe you see two. So just pop in the chat box, uh, high N or or whatever it is, E, just E, or just one letter or two letters, one or two letters, H and N or D and E or N or whatever it might be. Wow, a whole range of people coming through. Yeah, a whole, whole range. A lot of P's in there, a lot of M's, an H, a few H, oh, a D, thank goodness for a D. I'm a high D, a D and a P, oh wow, that's an interesting combination. Won't get time to talk about that, and the A and the P as well. Okay, so thank you, and P, and H, H P and E, wow, that's a, fa that's a very powerful combination there, H, P, E. I wonder what, I wonder what Monica is, that would be interesting to have a chat to her about what she is. So we're going to move on now. Thank you for that. We're going to move on to think about how easy was that to identify who your person is? And my guess from the speed at which those answers came through, that was really easy. It was not hard. Once we described the style to you, the individual style, you got it. You understood what we were talking about and you saw it in your person. Now you probably know that person quite well, but the great thing about this is this doesn't, you don't have to know people well in order to identify who they are. And we'll talk about that in a moment. You, there are clues, if you know what to look for, you can see it in, on, on meeting them. Um, we taught one group of call center people from major credit card in the UK. We taught them how to identify two styles, two strong styles in the caller in the first 40 seconds, four zero seconds. And they got really, really good at it. And they were brilliant. And they got such compliments from people who were calling in because they were treated as individuals, not everybody getting the same message. So it is easy to identify if you know what you're looking for. And that's really the, the beauty of this approach. So 
what's next? How to change your behavior to work with somebody? Now, the question is, why should I change? Well, it is about change. Otherwise, everything stays the same. We've got to have, that's why we're here. We're, we're here, we're interested in something changing. Um, but they're not gonna change. Pointing out to the fox that they're too opportunistic and they shouldn't be always looking around the chicken run and they're too charming for this particular company. What do you, what's the fox gonna say? But I'm a fox. What do you expect me to do? What do you want me to do? That's who I am. And that he or she is exactly right in that. That's what they are. Um, so it's up to me and you to change. And because, and the, and the big but in here, their temperament, temperament won't change. They won't and they probably can't change their temperament even if they're aware of it in that way. But their behavior can change. You and I can change our behavior and our behavior change can influence and impact on other people. You know that, I know that. Let's have a look at some specifics right now. But before we do that, let's have a look at the clash here because maybe there's a bit of a clash um, with you and your person X. So let's see what clashes we've possible clashes we've got. Imagine for a minute you're the high artist and your person X is the high politician. Um, how do you see them? So the high A will see the high P, loud, over-assertive, opinionated, in my face, too strong. Why don't they just shut up and let me get on with it? Why do they always have to be telling me what to do? Why can't they leave me alone to get on with it? Why are they so aggressive? Now, that's a possible conversation that the A is having in his, his or her head about the P manager or even salesperson. How successful is this high A going to be selling to the high P? Maybe, maybe not. Not without some work on actually handling the high P. And we'll look at that in a moment. By the way, the clash, this clash can also happen in the same person. The same person having A, as you, some of you spotted already, having A and P in the same person. That's quite a difficult combination um, because it's, it's both uh, secretive and withdrawn and it's out there and powerful. It's the oyster and the tiger in the same person. Quite difficult. Let's turn that round for a second. So now you're the high politician and your person X is the high A, the high artist. How's that gonna work? What do you think the high, what do you think the high politician's gonna think about the A? They're too shy, they won't look me in the eye, they won't say what they think, they won't get on with it, um, they won't take pressure, they've got too many ideas, they never, they never actually finish things, they've got lots of ideas, they're always doodling and drawing and so on. Again, if you're managing a, if you're a politician, high P, managing a high A, it's a challenge. You've got to hold back. You've got to pull that P back and see how can I do this differently? Same with the selling. It's no good going in with that level of selling. Let's take another combination. Let's imagine you're a high M and your person X is a high E. So what are you seeing? So you see them as too long-winded, they're boring, they're too focused on detail, they've got no fun, there's no chat, they're too serious. So how, if you're managing a high E, what's it like? You just don't understand them as a high M. You don't understand why they're so serious, why they just want to get on with the project. It's difficult. What about the next situation? Imagine you're now the high E. Your person X is a high M. How do you see them? See them frivolous, not focused, distractible, doesn't listen, too high energy, irrelevant. Um, how well are you going to manage that person? How well are you going to sell to them? You imagine the high E, I've got all my files here, all the, all the description of stuff, got the high M across the table, who just doesn't want to sit still. It's not really going to work. And how much does the E appreciate having an E, an M in the team? It's really hard. So we can see there's a clash of behavior. So uh, in there. So um, not quite sure what I'm going to ask you to do there. So we'll move on. And we're going to say, how do you then deal with the different styles? Because this is the crux of it. So understanding the styles is one thing. Actually being able to see them is, uh, and deal with them is different. So the high M, look at them. First, the chatty and upbeat, be chatty and upbeat, match their energy. You don't want to completely match it. You don't want to go overboard because that's not you probably. And you don't want to ask about the weekend at that point because they'll tell you nothing else. Keep bringing them back to the point. If you're selling to them, you keep closing. Why do you keep closing? Because you think you're best friends with them, but actually they're best friends with everybody. 
and the best salesperson will get to them first. So you need to keep closing them. The high D, no pressure. Don't ask for a decision. They hate making decisions. Don't put them in that place. Stay upbeat, but acknowledge that they're difficult. They got a difficulty. Show them a way forward. Be positive about that. If you're selling to them, give it. It's a long sale, by the way, and you may decide that you're better off without them. You're better off selling somewhere else. This is going to be a long sale. If it's big, uh, we worked with a, a major. Um, defense company who was selling to the government some time ago and and the some of the senior marketing people said to me once they'd learned the system they saved themselves six months because they realized their buyer was high d so they just went round him they just ignored him basically and they went round him so what you do is reassure them with a good reference so someone else has brought bought your proposition who's happy with it that will reassure them then there's the fox be as positive and upbeat as they are look as successful and look the part be make sure you're on time winners are early losers are late you don't want to be a loser and selling to them be ready with a discount or special terms because that's what special people get isn't it special clients get that now you don't have to actually give them a discount why not raise the price first and then you can then you can reduce it but if you reduce it first they'll still want a discount by the way there are two of these styles that have to have a discount and this is one of them um, there's another one which we'll come to and then there's the A, the high artist. So use a visual to explain as you, as, as A's love, as you love the words, the A's love graphics. They love to see something. Sit alongside them. Don't stare at them. Don't sit across the table. As somebody possibly on the call or high A that we all know, I know quite well, he has to sit opposite because he wants to see someone's face. But most A's do, do sit on the diagonal. No pressure. Don't give put up in front of pressure. If you're selling to them, appeal to their imagination. They've got a lovely imagination appeal to that. The high P, be as strong and as clear as they are. Direct and to the point. No idle chit chat. What did you do at the weekend? Did you watch the match? None of that stuff. Strong, unwavering eye contact. And when we can, a strong handshake. They will recognize that and appreciate that. If you're selling to them, don't try and warm them up. They will not warm up. They're like that all the time. They're probably like that at home. But ask them to make a minor decision. So when you're halfway through it saying, I will need to talk to your technical people. Who do you believe I should talk to first? Make them get, make a, a small decision. The engineer, the E, get ready for a long meeting. With full of detail and explanations. How can you add value to them? Take a genuine interest only if you've got time and you, you're genuinely interested. They will see through you like a shot if you pretend you know something about your, their topic. Don't pretend. But you're going to have to give time, give time. How do you sell to them? Allow them to experience your proposition. Allow them to feel it and touch it. Go away with it. They won't make an instant decision, but it will be a rational decision. It will be a rational decision as with with one other and whoops gone back too far the end the end also will be a rational decision so how do you deal with the end you'll be formal appropriate no risque jokes please business card agenda a logical approach be logical and formal and improvement oriented how you're selling to them give them again a good reference like the d but this time it's showing improvement so if somebody they would respect, similar size company may be, and find that. So there's some very quick ideas. What could you do? So in the chat box, please, now, we'll ask you to do this one. In the chat box, please pop one or two things that you're going to do differently with your person X. Chat here, not answer and just listen, not get upset. Yes. <laughs> like them what they like, ask them first, communicate them in a different way. Crush his hand. <laughs> yes. And you don't you don't need to do it off on top either. You sideways, not on top. Yeah. Meet them where they're at. Except they are probably like it with everyone else. They will be. You are not unique in this regard. By the way, the thing about the handshake. I agree. It's not just one clue. 
all of this is about looking for clues and the handshake the handshake can be a very important clue to seeing people um, the strong handshake probably indicates high p it might indicate high h but a really strong handshake probably is p it might be in it might not but just what it says to me when if it happens to me and say okay what have i got here have i got a high p then i'm looking for other clues it's just one of a number of clues wow okay we've got a lot we're going to move on so thank you not take it personally please don't be ready <laughs> okay so how does all this work in practice so we've got lots of this is situations people at work um, we've got a police officer there we've got a messy desk we've got someone on a the site there we've got all these different situations what actually happens so what happens we've got a little process here that we use um, this makes it a little bit formal but this is the process firstly talk we call it top dog talk how do people talk so we're listening for what they say and how they say it and how often they say it so the a the artist may not say much the d or, or the a may be hesitant in speech they may uh, um, uh, and you can see these actors when they're interviewed on television for themselves their real selves they will not like to be talking about because they don't do that well they do a, they do parts well they don't do themselves well so what do they talk about they talk about so the p will talk about so what they've won the h will talk about the money they've won or the money they made the d will talk about their problems the m will talk about the weekend or or the holidays and so on so what do people talk about? how do they do it do they is it energetic upbeat or is it serious and to the point is it focused on the eyes organization what are they who do they work for are they with ibm or apple because they're very very different organizations obviously is it the police force or is it the nhs again very different organizations police force is going to be normal politician you'll do it the right way and you'll do it the way i tell you to do it nhs clearly high n and d we'll look after you in the right way and we'll look after you in the right way and we don't care what we spend i didn't say that so so the nhs and the police and so on so each organization will have a temperament a way of being and this will have to be true of countries as well so Switzerland will be very much higher N normal than we are. Japan the same. Um, Denmark about the same as us, perhaps a little higher. Germany certainly higher than us. A lot more E in Germany, a lot more engineer, a lot more A in France, a lot of D in this country, and so on. So the position. So if you've got a safety officer, you're meeting the company safety officer, probably expecting to meet a double checker or a debater, an engineer, D and E. You don't particularly want a high P or a high H as a safety officer, probably. And dress, what do they look like? Have they got a ponytail, six button jacket, high A probably, or or what? What are they wearing? Sometimes a clue, or a red tie, maybe a H if, if they're wearing a tie. The office or their workspace, what does it look like? cluttered is it a mess is it organized tidy or what is lots of pictures of the family high d pictures of certificates high high p or projects high e so have a look around the gambit finally the opening position in chess how do you meet people either formal or informal so the m and the d are informal the a and the p are very formal are they late on time or early so the two who are late are politicians they won't apologize movers they will apologize oh i'm awfully sorry i'm late and so on so these are just clues for looking at people how do you see them you don't have to see them in person you know you could get it on the phone we've as we've talked with that group 40 seconds to get some clues some real clues about who people are get it on an email look at emails look at your email is it formal is it chatty do not is it one word or is it eight like or is it eight pages and linkedin have a look at their profile see what they say about themselves see what other people say about them this is a lovely and the combinations are important as well as we've said we don't have time today as a combination this is a lovely combination probably of mover engineer i would think probably some d as well mde maybe high end i trust him this guy just by looking at him i would but the combinations are important because that's what we sell to is the combinations that understanding people remember we're dealing with temperament it's powerful it's un, it's it's unchanging you're not going to change it but you can change behavior here's something to do it's free take our uh, quick quiz um, this is five minutes it gives you the, your top styles you'll get two or three or four of your top styles back almost instantly in an email uh, if you might want to take a screen grab of that you'll we'll send you that link 
but you might want to screen grab now because if you do that this week, another little freebie here, a bonus, I'm happy to have a chat with you for 30 minutes about your profile in the next seven days. If you do that, if you want to do that, <clears throat> let me know and I'll give you some contact details in a minute and I'll have it happy to chat with you about your profile. You won't get the whole profile. I, I see that. You won't get the whole profile. I'll talk to you about it. Or another freebie here. You could have a chat, 30 minutes chat or consultation, as Bob would say, about any member, about anything with any member of the team, about Bob, with Jim, with Richard, with Helen, uh, or with, um, have I mentioned everybody? Richard, Jim, Helen, Kate. Yes. So there's a freebie there. Or you could go for a book, Empathy Selling. Uh, I believe Chris Golis might be on the call today. Hello, Chris. Uh, you're probably about midnight in Australia. Really good books, these, Empathy Selling. Uh, we're happy to sell them to you. Go on to our website, empathystyles.com, or the HUM handbook. That's about management. How do you manage people differently and better? And Chris has got lots of ideas about that. Some warnings here, a health warning here. Don't give them a letter or a description. Don't say you're a high A, you're a high P, you're a high D. People don't like that unless they've already had an email from, uh, from the website or they've been on this webinar or they've read it somewhere and you can then have a discussion. People don't label people in that way. They won't appreciate it and they'll fight you. They'll say, no, I'm not. And even though they are, they'll say, no, I'm not. Don't blame them. They cannot help it. It's not their fault. Uh, they're stuck with, yes, I know it is their fault, really, but no, they don't understand it's their fault, so don't blame them, and you have to have work with it, and don't work on changing their temperament style, work on behavior, and that means your behavior change, and as many, many really good managers on the, on the call will know that changing the environment changes everything, so where you're not getting performance from someone, try a different environment, Ch try changing who they're sitting next to, try who they're talking to, talk to them more often, talk to them less often, whatever. Do something like that. Next week, it's Jim Heatherton uh, with procrastination. Remember, Jim was the guy who brought us how to empty your inbox a couple of weeks ago, and at least one of my clients and, and contacts has done that to extraordinary effect. He's really had something like 20,000 emails in his inbox. He's got rid of them all fantastic. Jim's going to do work on procrastination next week. Don't put it off. Come along and listen to Jim next week. Here's a bit of a, an offer for you. Um, for today, in fact, until Monday evening, next Monday evening, I'm prepared to run one or more 90-minute online sessions for up to 12 people. Would have been 550 for the one session. Happy to do that for 275, half price, or for two sessions at 450. And a bonus, additional bonus for that, I'll, as well as that, I'll spend an additional 30 minutes sometime, perhaps a week after that session with your team to help them understand. You've seen we can do a lot in a short time. People get this model quickly. They don't always know how to use it. And that's really the, the, the part of the train, the major part of the training is to how to do that. So just finally, um, if I was selling to each of you, how, what would I do? Um, so if I was selling to the M's top left, uh, I make it fun and teamwork. Uh, isn't it fun? It will be great fun to have the team together. If you're high D, I, I need to reassure you and you won't have to make any decisions. H is, I, I, I'll show you how to boost your income for you, if you're A. Just imagine how great it'll be to have the team together to do this stuff. For P's, lead your decision, make a great decision. Lead your team, make a great decision to have this team together and get them to improve and have a winning team. Um, the uh, E, take the, it's a reliable process. It takes the guesswork out of it. And for the N, it's right to train people in that. So. Oh, that's about it. Q&A. Bob, back to you. Have we got any questions? <laughs> well, we haven't asked for them yet. So oh, now, we haven't asked for any questions. So any now questions, is please? Time, now is the time to put some questions in the Q&A. Now, some did come through in the chat uh, earlier on. So uh, I do have some questions for you. Um, one person has asked, um, have I got to work out all seven styles? <clears throat> uh, thank you. <clears throat> no, you haven't. No, I, you're looking for 
it depends what you're doing. If you're working, if you're managing somebody, then over time you will want to understand their whole profile. But that's over time, not immediately. Um, if you're selling to them, no, you won't. You won't get all, all seven. Um, you'll get one or two, sometimes before you meet them, depending on the organization, you want two or three, maybe you'll get a sense of them and you can test it in the meeting. So if you've got a high engineer, you can maybe say, if you think you've got a high E, say, what's the latest project you've got on? And off they go. Um, sometimes the most important, the, the easiest way is to look for what's missing. So you might meet someone and say, oh, no, no, no M here or no P here. You don't get the strong handshake. You don't get the direct eye contact. So sometimes what's missing is as important as what's actually there. So you don't have to get all seven. Just one or two to start with gives you the clue. Okay, thank you, Walter. Uh, one, uh, Chris has asked, can we show the slide with all the people on it? So I guess that's the one you did just before the Q&A slide, is it? Uh, yeah, that one before. Can you show that one before? Oh. I <laughs> <laughs> wasn't planning to go through the whole lot again. Too late. <laughs> uh that, that'll do that one that, that one uh, chris is that okay put your answer in the chat so another question that's come in um in the chat rather than the q do put your questions in the q a if you can please um uh joanne has asked uh, how do you adjust your behavior when someone is fundamentally dishonest oh that's a long one um firstly well done for recognizing it <clears throat> probably what's happening, it's low N. That's one of the great things about this system. It's got the N, the normal in there. A lot of systems don't have the normal. And then the normal is a controlling mechanism. So when the normal's low, or can I say in Donald Trump's case, probably non-existent, probably in the minus, <laughs> probably don't negative, <laughs> negative normal. Yeah, you, it's, it's, I, will do, I will do things my way. Low normal means I will do things my way. High normal means I will do things the proper way. So most people in the UK will be sort of sort of three to six, two to two to six high normal. If you've got if you've got somebody who's low normal, low normal, high H, probably not always, but that's likely to be that um, fundamentally dishonest. I think you've got I would I would front them. Uh, if you're working with them, I think have, con confront them, and Bob will talk about that at some point. Bob, might, I'm going to ask Bob in a minute if he's got an idea about that, because I think it's about letting people know you know what's happening, and it's not acceptable. Um, I think that's it. so. Bob, what, what would you what would you say there? Yeah, um, yeah, but it, it is tough because with, with someone who's particularly low normal, then they really don't care about the rules, and they, they generally don't care about what you think. Uh, I, you have got to call it out. There is no advantage to not calling it out and saying, look, you know, this, this is unacceptable. So I, I think there is a way of doing it where you can um, still try and hang on uh, to whatever respect you have between the two of you, but, but where you've got someone who really doesn't want to play by the rules, you have got to call it out and say, I, I intend to play by these rules and I need you to play by these rules. Uh, and if you're not prepared to play by the rules, and we really have to, we really have to stop and go no further. Um, if you can get them to sign things, um, especially in blood, if it's low, normal, and high H, uh, that may still not stop them from changing their mind. Um, so confront it and walk away if you have to. Uh, that might be a tough ask. I'm sorry. Um, happy to talk about that more um, afterwards in the chat if that helps. Uh, we have another question. Um, I'm build, if I'm building a team for a specific project, how should I go about selecting the right types for the project? Oh, interesting question. Because somebody's going to, th I thought somebody would ask about recruitment. Haven't had time to talk about recruitment. <clears throat> Thing about recruitment, and this is about recruitment, is that you want to identify who you want. So it may be easier to say who you don't want. So if your project depends what the project is, whether it's an IT project or you're building a bridge or I don't know, you're, building, you're a cabinet, and you, you know, you're dealing with COVID-19, whatever the project is, what is the project about? We'll need some specialists on there. We'll need people who can focus probably. So you're probably looking at some high E, you're probably looking at some high N people. Um, you may not want, you might want some high D as well. The Ds, remember, are number two. They're good number twos. They love, 
They're happy to do the administration and make sure that's right. They don't necessarily want to lead the team, but they will do the stuff behind the scenes and they will get that right. Um, if, if it's a project involving other people, then you'll want some M there. So to warm, to warm everybody up or make re good relations with another team, maybe. Um, you probably want some P in there to drive it forward. If you're, if you're <clears throat> making a channel tunnel, there are a lot of challenges there. You'll want somebody to, that's focused on the future. The P, the H won't be focused on the future. The H will be focused in what's in it for me now. So you may not want too many H's there. Uh, and the A, you want perhaps some A if, if there's design. If there's thoughtful design, uh, it needs to be, to be brought in. Uh, happy to talk about that if, if someone wants to contact me. <clears throat> um, happy to do that. Oh, by the way, my contact details are walter.blackburn at empathystyles.com. We'll send you that, or you can call me on the mobile. But I'm happy to do that as well. Uh, Walter, uh, just uh, an addition to your mm. bear on recruitment. It is possible to analyze both individuals and the team. And of course, one of the things that you would think about is that temperament is the precursor of behavior so you, you can in fact think about not just the skills and the experience you want in a project team you can actually think about some of the default behaviors some of the things that you want them to do and see them doing as a default on a regular basis and, and if, if you know what behaviors you want then we can work out exactly what temperament is best suited to that and of course you can measure them um in the recruitment process journey um, and you'll be able to assess it once you get them on the phone in their emails or face to face. Um, so hopefully that's a reasonable answer. Um, if you want any more on that, Scott, then I, please can do I just jump out. in there, Bob, because I, it, yeah. I think one of the, one of the cliches we have is that we hire on <clears throat> ability. We fire on attitude. Mm. <clears throat> so one of the things we, we know we all do it. Um, but the experienced recruiters know to look beyond the CV, to look beyond the, what person's achieved and who they say they are to who they really are, because Absolutely. they may be able to do the job, but can they fit in? And do they want to do the job? And that, uh, coming back to Bob's point, is about their temperament. Hmm. So that is a, it's a much, that's so important to think of that. Get them to do the online quiz um it'll get, it'll, it may not be accurate it may it won't be 100 percent accurate we know that but it's like a wet finger in the wind it will point you in the right direction yeah if you if you recruit on interview alone um then um the fallout rate is very high you're 50 percent more likely to get the recruitment right if you do some kind of personality assessment yeah. be that empathy or not uh, and the empathy quick quiz or that's only 21 questions and takes three minutes is about 70 percent accurate um, all of the time, uh, unless somebody's lying. Um, and if people are authentic, it'll be more accurate. Uh, we have another question, Walter. How do okay. you stick? How do you get a high mover to stick to a regular routine? <laughs> There's a challenge. <laughs> how do you get a butterfly to fly straight? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, well, yes, but I think, I think you, uh, you, you have to paint the idea of why, why should they? What, it's sort of what's in it for me for the mover. Why should they do that? And po possibly the impact it's having on the rest of the team, because they are conscious of the team, um, maybe sit them in a different place, maybe change their environment, maybe just work with them in a different way, um, maybe keep, keep, have, have more of a constant attention to them, make sure they've got a list of things to do, keep them, keep them at it. Don't get upset. They, they do need, it's a bit like the you know, sort of child in the class who has to keep looking out the window or keep getting up and running around. They have to do that, as some of the teachers will know. Um, hard. The other thing is they won't just be high mover. There'll be something else there. And it depends how high that is. And you may want to play to that as well. And sometimes if they understand this process, one of the great things about um, the, the email, the, the quick quiz online, because you'll get that email, get them to do that. Then you can have a conversation with them about their high M and how it affects them and how it affects other people. Lovely to have that energy in the office. Sometimes it's just a bit too much. And then you can say, come on, Joan, can we have a bit less M here, please? And have a laugh. Or you can have a bit, can we have a bit more E or something? So one way of using the whole process is using the letters with people once they understand it and once they realize it's not a go at them it's, a, it's, it's talking about behavior it, it might work but it's challenging and well done for recognizing it 
Yeah, as a high end myself, I know I I <laughs> have to be reminded to do things frequently. So uh, if you're managing a high M, then you get used to reminding them about things frequently because it, it's just uh, part of the job. Hello, you are their manager. It's part of the job. Uh, uh, Walter, someone's asking, can we show the high P slide again? Uh, yes. Are, are you able to navigate? Which, which, which one? The uh... Something about the high P. Yeah, that one of those. That'll be it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yay, there's the high P slide. Hopefully that's good for you. Now we have another question, which is, um, give me some more help with how I would spot the stars in an email. <clears throat> okay, you're gonna get clues. You're, never, you're probably never gonna get the whole thing. Um, so you've got formality. First thing to look for is, is length of the email, I would say. <clears throat> is it over one page? Is it a whole page email? If it's more than a page, it's probably either high N or high E, either normal or engineer. So these are the people who feel they have to give you the detail. They need it, they want it, you must want it, you must need it. They don't realize that's, no, that, doesn't, that, that, that game doesn't play. You're not interested in all that. So look at the length of it. Is it half a page? Um, is it what? Then look at the formality. Dear, dear John, um, I hope you are well. How is your family? So quite formal, quite appropriate. So probably high end. Um, there's a lot of that going on right now. How are you? Um, but dear, when someone says dear so and so, that's that's the, again the formality. Hi, how are you doing? Probably less formal with the M. Um, the D will show up in the f first few words. Look at the first few words. In the, in the email and, and as, as you know, if you're selling as well, we know that you know, the first few words really are key. Um, but you need to put it together. Look at, look at how many, what, what words are used in there? Is it, has it been really thought about or has it been just dashed off or whatever? Um, I would say that's just have a look at the emails you've had from different people and see if you can start to see some differences. Start, and, and then perhaps have a chat with them on the phone without talking about this, of course, but then seeing if you can make sense of it. Thank you. Uh, Walter, uh, someone's asked if you see the E and the N slides again. So they're probably next, aren't they? And, and then we will all know you. Yeah, that's it. There's the E. So hopefully give them a few seconds to spot the things that they wanted to and ease ease are great for planning things L great at repetitive tasks great at the detail love reading the appendix they love it they love it yeah okay show okay. the end and the end the end never flustered always in control well the interesting thing about fluster you can fluster ends and they'll get very upset Ooh. but it won't be for long and they'll get, they'll be very embarrassed about it, but they can get, if you put them really under pressure, they will go boom and, and they'll, but it won't be for long. It'll come, they'll come back and they'll realize they've not, they've said the wrong thing. They, they don't, they don't want to say the wrong thing. Well, we mustn't say the wrong thing and that's going over time. It's now 12 o'clock. So Walter, um, a final word from yourself. <clears throat> Uh, final word. Oh, I can have lots of words. <laughs> I can have another 45 minutes. <laughs> well, I, I really enjoyed it. I'm, uh, I'm getting used to the technology, as you see. So um, this is such a useful tool. Please, whatever you're using at the moment, I won't name any of the other psychometrics out there, but this is so valuable, so powerful. Once you've had it, Chris Golis talks about the hum glasses. <clears throat> the hum is where this comes from. And once you put the glasses on, you will not see other people in the same light again. This is so useful. You're selling, you're managing, you're living with people. So have a go at it, even if you're skeptical. That's my final word. Thank you, Walter. And goodbye, one and all. Thank you, Bob. Have a great day. Stay Thank you. safe. Stay well.